Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be covering five skincare ingredients that you need and maybe you didn't realize you did. These are ingredients that you hear me talk about a lot, but you may have it in your head that they're for a certain thing, like for acne or for um, dry skin, but in, in reality, the ingredients have multiple, multiple uses for various conditions. And so I'm going to highlight five key ingredients that you definitely should consider incorporating into your routine. I'm also going to share with you guys some products that have these ingredients in them. Many of these products I have mentioned in numerous videos before, but you can find these products at Walmart. Today's video is in partnership with Walmart. Walmart, you guys know I'm a huge fan of shopping there. <laughs> um, I love going in there and checking out their skincare. Uh, I've always been a Walmart fanatic. I've, I've always shopped at Walmart my whole life, actually. Ingredient number one, benzoyl peroxide. Okay, benzoyl peroxide, you've probably heard of it for acne, right? As, as something like a teenager with acne would use. But in reality, it has so many more uses than just that. Benzoyl peroxide is an antibacterial ingredient, but the benefit of using benzoyl peroxide for, as an antibacterial is that the bacteria on your skin cannot develop resistance to it as opposed to an antibiotic like clindamycin, ba bacteria that live on your skin, they can develop resistance to it. And that is a real problem. Benzoyl peroxide, not the case. It can reduce the burden of problematic bacteria on your skin that cause a variety of skin issues. Uh, I'm holding up one of my favorite benzoyl peroxide washes here. It is Panoxol. 4% uh, benzoyl peroxide uh, wash. Again, it's marketed for people with acne. I also love and adore the CeraVe Acne Foaming Wash. I'll list that down below for you guys as well. I'm gonna list all of these products down below, um, by the way. It can be incredibly beneficial for reducing body odor. You guys who have followed me, you know this at this point, but I do have a lot of new subscribers. Uh, if you um, deal with body odor, especially in the summer, um, you sweat a lot in the armpits, definitely consider incorporating a benzoyl peroxide wash. Lather it to like your armpits while you're in the shower, let it sit on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. This can help cut down on the bacteria that would otherwise break down your sweat and make you, make you stink. Um, not only can you use it in the armpits, if you are a loved one has foul smelling feet, Get yourself some benzoyl peroxide wash. Lather your feet up, let it sit on there for a few minutes, and then rinse it off. Certain bacteria end up on the feet, they break down sweat, and they can cause a pretty foul odor. It's also anti-inflammatory and kind of helps to exfoliate the skin. If you deal with ingrown hairs, try benzoyl peroxide. I know a lot of men who follow me, you know, they're always asking for recs for ingrown hairs in the beard area, but a lot of women are asking the same question, especially if you shave in the bikini area while with summer coming up, you're likely to get ingrown hairs. Check out a benzoyl peroxide wash because you can lather it to that area, leave it on the skin for a few minutes, and then rinse it off. It will cut down on the chances of the hairs growing downward just by kind of exfoliating a little bit. And it's also anti-inflammatory, so it will help with the bumps. If you have that condition, hydradenitis superativa, which is miserable to live with, this is something you need in your life, uh, you know, for controlling the boils in your armpit, groin area, same, same approach. Lather it to those areas, leave it on the skin for a few minutes, and then rinse it off. Will help tremendously. And then of course, acne, which is what it is indicated for, but you can use it for acne breakouts on the body too, like your chest, your back, same approach. Lather it there, leave it on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. If you are on an oral antibiotic for a skin condition like acne or rosacea, and you're gonna be on an oral antibiotic for a couple of months like doxycycline or minocycline or saracycline, you definitely want to incorporate benzoyl peroxide. Why? It reduces the risk that the bacteria on your skin will develop resistance to those antibiotics. Lastly, impetigo. What is impetigo? It is a superficial skin infection caused by a pathogenic strain of Staphylococcus aureus bacteria, and you can pick it up. Uh, you know, at gyms is a frequently a frequent location. People, some people are colonized with it in their nose and it ends up getting into little cuts and things and causing a type of skin infection called impetigo. If you or a loved one works out in a gym, it, you know, if you have a young teenager who is in team sports, 
like wrestling in particular, where they have not only the contact with potentially contaminated surfaces of like the gym equipment, but then they're having skin on skin contact with one another that can transfer it to, from person to person. This is a must have. All right, so that is a favorite ingredient of mine and highly recommend it. It's more than just an acne treatment. It has a lot of other benefits. Number two ingredient is a retinoid. Now, retinoids for the most part are prescription. Retinoids are forms of topical vitamin A that uh, are indicated for acne and many for anti-aging purposes. But over the counter, you can buy a dapoline, which is a retinoid uh, for acne. Um, and then, you know, I'm holding up here Differin Gel, um, which you can get at Walmart. Differin Gel or Adapalene is FDA approved for the treatment of acne, but it can be used for a lot of other things off label. Um, for example, there is good evidence that Adapalene can help in improving the appearance of sun damage. If you have age spots, like on the back of your hands, it's not just a face product. If you have age spots on the back of your hand, give Differin Gel a try. Um, Sunspots on the face, freckles, it can help improve the appearance of. It also can help with sebaceous hyperplasia. A lot of you guys deal with that, those little enlarged oil glands. Um, because it kind of gently exfoliates the skin and helps control cell differentiation, it certainly can help that uh, as well. You have to use it consistently for a while to see benefit, but if you deal with those, definitely try Adapalene. Uh, it can help. The other condition that it can help is with milia. Milia are those little tiny um, superficial cysts they can happen uh, like on the cheeks. It can happen really anywhere. The cheeks is a common area. Backs of the hands, they happen um, either spontaneously or after some type of skin injury. And they should resolve, but sometimes they can be really stubborn and stick around or you can just be prone to them. Using a retinoid like a dapoline can definitely help. Hyperpigmentation, if you have hyperpigmentation, definitely give a dapoline a try. It can inhibit some of the machinery that leads to upregulation and abnormal uh, pigment and it will exfoliate the skin, kind of in increasing the rate of turnover to clear out the residual hyperpigmentation in the top layer of the skin. Number three, should come as no surprise to you guys, it is petrolatum. Petrolatum is a favorite of mine and it doesn't get much better in my opinion than good old fashioned Vaseline. Petrolatum is the active ingredient in Vaseline. It's the only ingredient in Vaseline. Petrolatum, great for improving healing. You get a cut, Vaseline. You sustain a first degree burn cooking in the kitchen, Vaseline. Dry eyelids, crusty, flaky, maybe you came in contact with something, Vaseline. Dry, peely lips, chapped lips, Vaseline. Working out or walking, you get uh, chafing, Vaseline. It is a skin protectant. It reduces water evaporation out of the skin, keeping it hydrated, healthy. And when you do have a skin injury, whether it be a cut or uh, an impaired skin barrier from flaring of eczema. What Vaseline does is it provides a seal that allows for the skin cells to migrate in and heal properly. So it does facilitate healing um, and it's fantastic. Everybody should have this, it is amazing. No, I don't work for Vaseline or Unilever. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be the brand name Vaseline, you just want Petrolatum. Now there are some competitors on the market, which are good. Uh, Aquaphor, some people are loyal to Aquaphor. It's their ride or die. It is a petrolatum based ointment. It has a few other ingredients like lanolin, which people can be allergic to. So it is more likely to cause problems, whereas Vaseline, 100% uh, USP petrolatum, uh, you, you don't become allergic to that. So it is not as safe as Vaseline, but it is another option. And then likewise, a longtime favorite of mine, you guys know, is the CeraVe Healing Ointment. This is another petrolatum ointment that likewise is great. This, as opposed to Vaseline, has hyaluronic acid in it, which will help improve the moisture content of the skin. And this also has ceramides, which kind of clue your skin barrier into repair. So it has a few other good ingredients. But again, the more ingredients, the more likely for you to develop problems to one of them. If you, you know, for example, a contact dermatitis, 
So this is a holy grail for me, but I would always, I would always default to Vaseline. <laughs> All right, ingredient number four is one that nobody ever really talks about, and that is urea. I mean, urea is an ingredient. It sounds like urine. It's probably very off-putting. Maybe that's why brands don't advertise it very much. Usurin has some fantastic uh, urea-based products. The Roughness Relief Cream is a gem. Now, urea is great for addressing dry skin. What it does is it actually actively improves the moisture retention and barrier recovery, similar to ceramides. It also is a keratolytic, meaning it dissolves the glue between built up crusty skin cells, facilitating their removal so that your skin barrier can function better. Um, it doesn't have all this heaped up dead stuff on top of it, it smooths things out. If you have dry skin, you need urea in your life, but it's more than just a dry skin ingredient. It's also great for your nails. It improves the health of the nail plate. If you have uh, calluses, it will help exfoliate that and just make your feet look a lot better. I love using a urea-based foot cream. You guys know I'm a huge fan of the Carousel Foot Ointment. Definitely recommend that now that we're getting into the summer months to make your feet look better. You don't need to go to a salon and have them scrape off your callus. Just use a urea cream. This one by Eucerin you could use. The carousel one is a lot more intense and you will get uh, results faster. But yeah, uh, great for calluses, great for just making your feet look better and great for the health of your nails. Uh, if you have toenail fungus or fingernail fungus, using a urea-based ointment is helpful as well because it uh, kind of cuts down on the burden of scaly stuff that the fungus feeds off of. And then if you use antifungals, it allows them to get into the nail better. So it's a great ingredient. It's also wonderful if you have psoriasis uh, to put, like for example, if you have psoriasis patches on your elbows, put urea on there. It will help soften those scales away and it will allow your other psoriasis medications to get into those lesions better. If you have uneven skin tone on the body, I highly recommend a urea-based cream such as this because it will help exfoliate that dead stuff that is making the skin look discolored. I have a lot of people who have deeper skin tones asking me, what can I use to even out skin tone on the body? This will help. You gotta stay consistent with it, but it definitely can help. It makes your skin more even, more moisturized, it just smooths everything out and improves hydration. All right, last but not least, you guys are like, how is this an ingredient we didn't know about? SPF. All right, I know what you're thinking. Of course, we know we need to wear sunscreen, but I do have a lot of new viewers here, and some people are not, you know, in the know. If you don't know, you need to be wearing sunscreen every day, all year round. But the reason I'm bringing it to your attention in this video is because people kind of get the gist that you need to wear it, but there are so many locations on the body that people are forgetting to put sunscreen on. For example, people often forget to put sunscreen around their eyelids. That was one of the most commonly neglected areas uh, uh, in a study looking at uh, how people applied sunscreen, they're missing around their eyes. And the skin around the eyes is very thin, very delicate, prone to damage from the sun uh, more quickly than other areas of the face. And it's also, you know, where crow's feet show up, a lot of skin cancers form there. And I know many of you with deeper skin tones, you deal with hyperpigmentation, dark circles under the eyes. You need to be protecting your skin from the sun with sunscreen and sunglasses. People also forget sunscreen on their lips. And the lips are very prone to damage from the sun because they don't have the pigment like the rest of your skin to kind of buffer and block out some of that damaging UV radiation. Plus there aren't the oil glands and things to keep the skin moisturized. Highly, highly recommend a longtime favorite product of mine, the Vanny Cream Lip SPF. And this product is a two for one. You can put it not only on your lips, but you can also use it around the eyes as protection. See, a lot of people, they are hesitant to put sunscreen around the eyes because it burns, it stings. I always suggest using a mineral sunscreen, but a mineral sunscreen such as this, intended for the lips, is gonna go over much better uh, you know, in that delicate area as well. So highly recommend this, it is very good. Other places people are forgetting sunscreen. Now this is not an everyday occurrence, but do consider putting sunscreen on your scalp. Why? If you've ever had a sunburn on your scalp, it needs no addressing why you need it there. But uh, skin cancers on the scalp are very common. 
Now, if you have hair that covers the majority of your scalp, you're probably fine. It does offer some protection, but if you wear, if your hair is thinning or you wear a hairstyle that exposes a lot of your scalp, you definitely want to consider using a sunscreen there. Of course, you can use the regular sunscreen that you put on your face, but a lot of times those end up building up on your hair. They can make your hair brittle, greasy, frizzy, unmanageable. Um, the best protection for your scalp is gonna be a hat. But if you are out by the pool, if you are out of the pool or out you know, by the beach and you're gonna get in the water, you're, you're probably not gonna wear a broad brim hat in the water, let's be honest. Ideally, you would wear a swim cap, but not everybody wants to do that. Highly recommend this product by Banana Boat. It is their hair and scalp defense. Uh, it does have fragrance in it, but I have not found a scalp specific sunscreen that does not have fragrance. Um, this is a chemical sunscreen. The way to use it is to just part your hair like down the middle, spray it directly on your scalp. Don't spray it on your hair, spray it directly on your scalp. Part here and spray and part here and spray and then massage back, down, get it, get it all over your scalp. Now, people will be like, isn't that a little extreme, putting all that sunscreen on your scalp every day? I would say this is not something you necessarily need to use every day because you're gonna have your hair covering stuff. This is more for those days where you're outside all day, like at the beach or the pool, and you don't wanna wear a hat when you get in the water. Definitely grab this. What I also like about this product is it does not run into the eyes with sweating. That is, that is something that you know would not be pleasant. So highly recommend that, it is a good one. Stay tuned, I will have a video coming out soon about all of my go-to recommendations for scalp sunscreen. So stay tuned for that, but that is one that's gonna be in that video that I strongly recommend. Other locations people forget, their ears. Not just the, the front of the ears, but the back of the ears see a lot of sun damage. Uh, skin cancers on the tops of the ears, are very common. Do not forget the hands. You guys know I am always wearing driving gloves as a way to protect my hands from the sun when I'm in the car, but don't forget sunscreen on your hands. The same sunscreen you use on your face, you can use on your hands. And don't forget your feet. Now that it's getting into summertime, that is an area that a lot of people neglect. Yeah, the top of the feet is an area that people just don't think to put sunscreen. And in the summer, you're wearing sandals, flip-flops, whatever, you're gonna get a lot of sun exposure there. One product I really like to wear every day um, as a body moisturizer is the Eucerin Daily Hydration Cream. You can use this on the hands, the feet, the face. I mean, you can use this from head to toe, just as like an everyday moisturizer with SPF. It's really good, it's a really good value. And uh, I like, you know, I put this on my body in the morning as a body moisturizer and I put it on my feet. So I'm just in the habit of it. And that's why I wanna draw it to your attention. It's a good product for just getting in the habit of putting sunscreen everywhere where you're not gonna have clothing covering it, like your legs, your feet, your arms. Um, and you can use this on the head and neck as well, like your face, your neck, your ears. Those are areas you don't wanna forget. As far as sunscreen to the lips, one point about that too, I get questions, can I just use my regular sunscreen on my lips? You certainly can, but they can be very drying there because remember the lips, they don't have the oil glands and things that the skin does. So they're more sensitive. That's why I recommend a specific lip SPF product. Plus sunscreen rubs off a lot more frequently on the lips because you're eating, drinking, talking, what have you. So you need to reapply it more frequently. Having a lip balm, you know, is nice. Otherwise, if you're reapplying your regular sunscreen, it's gonna get very drying and irritating after a while. So yeah, those are my top five ingredients you should seriously consider incorporating into your routine. Uh, they have a lot of potential benefits, not just for you know the, the first and foremost thing that comes to your mind. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you Walmart for sponsoring today's video. I will link everything down below in the description box. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.